So when you're sewing leather, you've got to index your holes. You need to make sure you have the same number of holes all the way through the leather. And this isn't necessarily like sewing standard fabrics. A lot of the time with the heavier leathers, the upholstery leathers are thin, but the thicker hides like the Latigo, you're going to have to pre-punch every single one of your holes and then Sewing is more an operation of putting the thread through to tie it together more in a rope-like fashion than just your standard sewing. So one important thing to consider when you have your part, as you're doing your work, you want to register your perimeter so you know that you need to start punching your holes on the front section of the perimeter, but you also need to index where you need to start punching your holes on the interior of your larger piece of leather. So one of the things you need to consider is I'm going to start my whole perimeter here, but I don't need any holes through the remainder of the portion of the pouch. And so you've got to make sure that both sides are indexed. And I'm using just the silver grease pen to make sure that I can see where I start as well as where I stop. Okay, so very subtle marking on the top there, right here, and right here. And that's when I'll use a punch. You can use a rotary punch for um, standard hole punching on leather, or you can use a slit chisel. I prefer the slit chisel just because I get uniform spacing, but just know you're gonna lay out a bunch of polka dots uh, going all the way around the perimeter here, all the way around the perimeter here, and the entire 16 inch perimeter that is your side pouch, as well as any extra bits you decide to keep for other details, okay? So when it comes to punching holes in leather, there's a couple of ways to do it, okay? You've got your standard rotary punch, depending on your thread size, you're probably gonna be on the smallest setting and you can just sit and punch these all by hand by squeezing. Uh, oftentimes when you're threading, what you'll need is something that's a little smaller than this large indexed hole. Okay, it depends on your thread size. So if you're using thread size that looks a little bit like this, okay, those holes are excessive. Okay, so it really depends on the size of thread that you're pushing through your material, okay? Just because you can see that there's a lot of, let's get that in focus. There's a lot of gap in that hole. So you want to make sure your hole is comparable to the size of your thread, right? And we don't really think about that when we're using sewing machines because the needle is the size of the hole, but you have to pre-punch your holes with leather. So what we do want to consider is what, what should we be using to make our holes? And so oftentimes you can use a little pierce punch, okay? These tools work great. The thing about a pierce punch is you just push and go, and it gives you a nice reasonable size hole that you can thread through without issue, right? But, um, <clears throat> maybe you don't have one of those. You can always use a tool like a, an awl where you just go through and you stab one at a time as you go. That works as well. Um, but when I'm doing large production work and I've got to do a lot of sewing, I tend to use just a chisel. Right? It's got four slots. Make sure all your holes are uniform spaced and there's enough room for when you go into the stitch work that thread coming through both ends will have room to cinch down and tighten and you get this really nice border. So if you look on the perimeter, right, it's a double stitch and you have this nice border that the slit provides. So what I'm going to do is show you how to start out your stitch work, right? And it's pretty straightforward. You just set your work right there and you give yourself enough perimeter to where you're sure the leather won't tear completely through. And then with your rubber mallet or your rawhide mallet or a wood mallet, you're just gonna go through and hammer so that your chisel pierces all the way through or your awl or your punch or whatever you have 
and then just work your way down the perimeter. And you want to have about the same number of holes going along this perimeter as you have going along your full perimeter of the back piece. So what I do is I actually use the previous slit as a register to lock in my chisel. So I'm only punching three new holes at a time and then I just work my way down. And you want to make sure you have a nice wood block between your material so you don't end up ruining your desk or anything else. And this is something you can have earplugs in for or if you have headphones, those work or iPod earbuds or whatever they call them, the buds. As long as you have some form of hearing protection as you work down the line. And the trick here is to not get too close to the perimeter to where you're worried about the material tearing out, okay? So that's where we are so far, and I will do the rest of this component, the front, the back, top, front, and the sides via time-lapse.